So many are mourning tonight, including Stephen Curtis Chapman, a Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter. He and his family knew Catherine Coons very well, not just as an educator, but as a friend and a lifesaver. After a tragic accident when Stephen's daughter Maria was accidentally struck by a vehicle driven by one of his sons, Stephen says that Coons stepped into their lives in a powerful way, walking with them in their anguish and their suffering. I'm grateful Stephen Curtis Chapman could join us tonight. Stephen, I know you and your family are grieving, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about, about Catherine. She sounded like such an incredible person. The, the police chief has said that he can't confirm it, but he says it's very possible that, that she was running toward the, the shooter. That probably doesn't surprise you, given that when your family was grieving, she ran toward, toward, toward your grief, toward your trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Catherine, um, Miss, Miss Koontz, as my boys uh, called her, um, she was a, uh, an amazing person, um, and she would run. That would be like her um, move towards step into trouble, um, pain, hard things. That's why her life um, marked our family so significantly. Um, we knew her um, before uh, we walked through the uh, great tragedy of, of losing our youngest daughter. My sons um, were, we had made a decision uh, to go have them go on the road with me, tour with me for a season. And she being an educator, the ac academic dean of uh, the school that all my kids attended, uh, CPA, Christ Presbyterian Academy in, uh, here in Nashville, she would have naturally said, no, you need to, you know, do, it's a college prep school, go to college, get, you know, education. But mm -hmm. she, the way she was, she said, I see a different story in you guys and I see it in your eyes and your heart. And so she found a way with us to help them go on tour with me, be in my band and do kind of homeschool tutoring with her. So when they weren't on the road, they were either in her office or at her house. Um, she had an uh, unusual, amazing way with boys to know when it was time to, you know, close the books and because, you know, let them do their shenanigans or whatever and laugh with them and then be, you know, stern and, and all of that. So they already had an amazing relationship and we did our whole family with her. Um, but then when um, when we lost our youngest daughter, Maria, and uh, in a very tragic way that uh, as the story uh would be our son will in particular was carrying a very very uh, heavy weight um and through the time that she was working with them and would continue to be so much more uh, my son caleb said mentor friend um confidant i mean she was all of those things and teacher of so much more than what they learn in books that they it's not an overstatement. We would have said this a week ago. We would have said it a month ago. We did say it all the time, even before this terrible incident and this, this devastating thing that's happened. We would say Catherine Koontz is one of the people who helped save our son's life hmm. um, through walking with him and uh, yeah, just caring for him and, and moving into as hard and as awful as that story was for us. She just, she ran towards it. And so, yeah, it does, would not surprise us. In fact, when we first heard what was happening and we were huddled up, praying, crying, begging God that this wasn't even true. Um, we knew Catherine was there. We knew this, she was the head of this school. And my wife even said, as much as I don't want to believe Catherine is one of those that we're hearing about, I know her well enough to know she probably was doing everything she could to um, to change this story, to stop this thing from happening, to talk to this person, whatever she could do. Yeah. That's just your, your son, Will, posted a tribute and it said, in part, this incredible woman walked by my side through the darkest time of my life and was a mentor and a friend. Give Maria, yeah. that's your daughter, a hug for me. And I can't wait to all be together again sooner than later. And Caleb also posted a tribute. And I love what Caleb wrote. He said, I'll be a student of your kindness forever about Catherine. <laughs> That's such a great, a great way to say it. You said that she had a, a, a supernatural power. What, what, in what way? Uh, it was, um, it was really, it was, it was uh, kindness 
And um, when I read those words, my son, obviously, you can imagine as a dad um, Mm -hmm. reading the words of both my sons. So very proud of them and how they have stewarded their their whole story um, and their journey and with the their music and and all that they're doing. But um, she was, you know, those people that you encounter and and you if you're fortunate enough and and God allows your path to cross um, with people that you just there's just something they see into your soul and they see they they see something that most people kind of miss and just pass by she saw it in our our daughter shohanna our first of our three adopted daughters Shoei was was gifted uh as a kindergartner um she Catherine saw that and said hey you guys let me talk to you all let me and she she saw kind of in even just what most people saw boy she's a really bright student but Mm. She just had this ability and God gave her, I believe, um, to see into the heart and the soul and the story of of the student, the person that she was with, and um, help them steward that. I mean, I feel like that's what she helped our boys do and even even our daughter, Johanna, um, in, a, in just a really profound way. One of the things I've learned about grief really in the last year or two, talking to, to people uh, who, who are who are in it, moving through it, living with it, um, is that one's relationship with somebody who has died doesn't necessarily have to end. In fact, that relationship can change over time and, and you can still have a, a relationship. Um, I know you, you said to our producer that you hope that this is not the end of Catherine's story and that, yeah. that her story will go on. Um, yeah. And I love that idea that, that this is not her end. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is the hope that really connected our lives, um, you know, with Catherine. It's the hope that I know uh, fueled her life, um, her teaching, her um, vocation, but really for her, it was a mission and even a ministry. Um, I, I knew that about her. And it was a hope that, and I think it's why she could see this story in my son's, you know, and and their journey. And they even, even said that. It's like, you know, the she she helped them even when they didn't believe in the story that God was writing with their their lives themselves. She kind of pulled that out, and the hope that fueled that for her um, is a hope that sustained our family and and our journey that we've been on still now for fourteen years since we lost our daughter is the hope that the story isn't over. That it's not a fairy tale. It's not wishful thinking to believe that just like God promised in Scripture that. There's a day coming when all the broken things will be made whole, when all the um, all the sad things will come untrue, as you know, Gandalf told Frodo. It's I, I believe that is and, and that's what has we've held on to its anchor that we've held on to. And I know it's what fueled Catherine. And so I really believe it's not wishful thinking to say, I know we're going to see her again. We're going to see our daughter again. Um, and and it's that's the hope that keeps us moving forward. Well, Stephen Curtis Chapman, I, I really appreciate your time and, and I wish you continued peace and strength in your grief. Thank you so much, Anderson. Bless you.